Hi. So far, we've learned how to apply Kirchhoff's current law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, and Ohm's law. Now, that's all you ever really need to analyze any resistive circuit. However, if, for example, you've done the projects relative to series resistors and voltage dividers, you know that series combinations of resistors can make our lives easier than just using a brute force method relying on the very basic laws. We can also often simplify our circuits by recognizing parallel circuit elements and combining parallel combinations of resistors in our circuit. That's what we'll do in this video. Now, first, of course, we need to define what we mean by parallel elements. Here's a set of two parallel elements. By definition, parallel elements share exactly the same voltage difference, always. For example, we've defined the voltage across element 1 as V1 and the voltage across element 2 as V2. Now, if we apply KVL around this loop, we'll see that minus V1 plus V2 is equal to 0, or V1 is equal to V2. There's no qualification to that statement. These two are always the same, and the elements are in parallel. Now, another and slightly simpler way to identify parallel elements is if several elements share the same two nodes, they're generally in parallel. However, if you're ever in any doubt as to whether the two elements are in parallel, apply KVL, and that will resolve your problem. One thing you don't want to do is misidentify elements as being in parallel. That will allow you to take a shortcut to analyzing the circuit, but your analysis is always guaranteed to be wrong. Now let's narrow our focus to just looking at parallel combinations of resistors. These two resistors are in parallel. If we do KVL around this loop, we see that they both share the same voltage difference. We've defined the voltage across both resistors as V and the total current into the combination as I. As always with passive elements, we followed the passive sign convention when we define V and I. Now let's define I1 and I2 as the currents through the individual resistors. Now let's see if we can determine a relationship between V and I for this pair of resistors. Essentially, what we want is an IV characteristic for the whole circuit to the right of these two terminals. If I do KCL up at this node, I see that the current I is equal to the sum of the currents I1 and I2. Ohm's law across each of these resistors says that I1 is equal to V over R1, and I2 is equal to V over R2. Now if I combine these two guys, I get that I is equal to V over R1 plus V over R2. I can pull the V out of this expression and say I is equal to V times 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. If I divide both sides by this guy, I can write the voltage V as being I times 1 over this whole mess. This is now in the form of V is equal to I times some resistance. This is the equivalent resistance of this pair of resistors. Now, it's common to rewrite this in an alternate form. If I multiply this whole thing by 1 in the form of R1 times R2 over R1 times R2, I get V is equal to I times R1 times R2 over R2 plus R1. This is an alternate form for the equivalent resistance of these two resistance. It's the product of the resistances divided by the sum of the two resistances. So let's summarize the results of the previous slide. It turns out that the circuit on the left is identical, in some sense, to this circuit if we set REQ to be 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. As we saw previously, if we have a combination of only two resistors, this is equal to R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. It's the product of the two resistances divided by the sum of the two resistances. Now, this just means that the relationships between voltage and current at the terminals of both of these resistors is the same. Since we characterize circuit elements by their voltage-current relations, we can replace the circuit on the left with the one on the right in any circuit without changing the behavior of the overall circuit. 
Now, as with series resistors, though, note that we're not planning to change the physical circuit so that it has only one resistor. But when we analyze mathematically the circuit to predict voltages and currents, we can make the replacement and analyze the simpler circuit to determine how our original circuit is going to behave. We can generalize this result for an arbitrary number of parallel resistors. Suppose we have n resistors, all in parallel. Our resistors are R1, R2, and so on and so forth, up to R sub n. If we do KVL around any loop in this circuit, we see that the voltage difference across all the resistors is the same, so they're all in parallel with one another. Now, if we do basically the same analysis we did previously for just two resistors, we'll find that the equivalent resistance of this combination follows the pattern of the first relationship we obtained for two resistors. We can add up the inverse of all the resistances and take one over that quantity. However, we don't have a form of this equation that's analogous to the second relationship we determined for the two resistors. Sadly, the math just doesn't work out.